This video shows the use of the Aufbau principle, the Pauli principle, and Huhn's rule to construct an orbital diagram for the element vanadium. This is also sometimes called an orbital energy diagram, and there are several different ways to draw these pictures. I'm going to show you one way. The element vanadium is V, and it has an atomic number of 23. So that means in the neutral atom we have 23 electrons that we need to place a sign to different orbitals. So we're going to begin by drawing a vertical axis, label it energy, and we're going to write down the orbital energies in the order in which we fill them. So we start with the 1s. So here's the 1s down here. So I like to write my orbitals in columns according to orbital type. The s's go in one column, the p's in another column, and the d's in a third column. So 1s goes here. Higher in energy then is the 2s orbital. And then I have a new column for the 2p's over here. One, two, three, the 2p's. And then the next in our filling order is 3s. So here's the 3s back in the s column. Then the 3p's, one, two, three. Then we go to 4s instead of 3d. So there's a little line up here that represents 4s. By the way, some uh, people will draw little boxes instead of these little horizontal line segments. Anyway, each one of these line segments, or a box, if you want to draw a box, or even a circle, represents an orbital, a different orbital. Remember, an orbital is a region in space where it's likely to find an electron. So after the 4p comes the 3d. One, two, three, four, five 3d orbitals, right? Corresponding to the different m sub l values of minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. Remember that when we're talking about d-type orbitals, the l quantum number is equal to 2. So m sub l can take any value on from minus 2 up to plus 2. So it turns out that this is as high as we need to go, but after the 3d would come the 5s. So we could draw 5s up here. But that one's not going to be occupied for vanadium. So we'll run out of uh, electrons before we run out of boxes on this diagram for vanadium. So again, the off bell principle, we start filling low energy. So we put one electron spin up in that low energy shell. And then we do another electron spin down, and that energy shell is full. So according to the off bell principle, we move up. We had to put this other electron spin down to follow the Pauli principle. So now the off bell principle says we put another electron spin up. Pauli principle says we can put another electron in that same box, spin down, and we can't put any more electrons there. Now in the two Ps, we start filling in any box we want spin up. It doesn't matter if it's spin up or spin down, but I started with spin up. So the next electron has to go in a different box. That's Hund's rule. We want to maximize the parallel spins. So we maximize the parallel spins, then we're going to follow the Pauli principle and pair them up until they're all full. Then we follow the Aufbau principle and move up to the next box. And we keep on doing this, following the Pauli principle, the Aufbau principle, and Hund's rules for each one of these electrons until we have all of these boxes filled. And we've gotten to 23 electrons. That's where we're going. All right, so let's count our electrons to make sure we don't go past. So down here in the 1s, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 up in the 4s. So this is going to be electron 21. Then we do our next electron, 22. And our final 23rd electron goes here. So we've got these three electrons up here in the 3d orbital. And so they would be in the m sub l equal minus 2, minus 1, and 0 boxes. And remember that these five different orbitals correspond to those cloverleaf shapes, but they're kind of arranged in different orientations in space in these different orbitals. Um, we've got three unpaired electrons in the case of vanadium here. And um, since these three, we've got three unpaired electrons, that would make this atom paramagnetic. So it would be deflected in a stern gerlach experiment as it passes through an inhomogeneous magnetic field. So there's another example of doing an orbital diagram for an element. We could translate this into an electron configuration, just writing down the number of electrons that's in each set of orbitals. So this would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d3. 
Now one thing important to notice about this orbital uh, electron configuration is that this is an order of filling. This does not tell us which, or which electron is most easily removed from the atom. So it turns out that those are going to be the 4s2 electrons. So if right, we were writing this in terms of sort of energies based on a photoelectron spectrum, we would move this 4s2 group out here and have all the threes together. But our filling pattern goes like this. And so this would be an orbital diagram for vanadium. Sometimes you will see orbital diagrams written out in a line like this, 1s, 2s, 2p, and so on, instead of vertically like I've drawn them. And that's perfectly okay as well.